your hands to him and bless him. Wave your hands to him and bless him. We join the angels this morning with an endless hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We bless your name, Jesus. It's an endless hallelujah. We bless your name. Wave those hands to him all over this place. Father, we just worship you. Let it come from your heart this morning. Let it come from your heart today. Let it come from your heart. 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 We honor your presence, Jesus. We honor your presence, Jesus. A day in your house, a day in your presence. It's like a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell outside of the tent. Lord, we worship you and we celebrate your presence. 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 We join the angels this morning to just say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so, our Father, we honor your presence in this place. We are gathered unto you, God of all flesh and Father of all spirit. We ask this day that you give each and every one of us an encounter in your presence. Let burdens be rolled away. Let hearts be mended in this place. Let your presence pervade and pervade our hearts. Let your peace rest upon somebody this day. Lord, wherever people are joining the service from, meet them in the living room, in the car, at the airport, wherever people are, plus everyone in this room right now, and everyone who will join us as we go into your world this morning. Let your presence break every heart of stone to become a heart of flesh. Whatever contends with our joy, Whatever contends with our peace, we speak against such this morning. Let the pleasures, pleasures of your presence overwhelm every heart. Let your grace be released upon everyone. We thank you, everlasting Father. Breathe upon your word this morning. Let it minister grace to every hearer. Let no one be the same again. Thank you for healings. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for divine turnaround. We thank you, Father. And if there's anyone that's far from you under the influence of this service in this room or online, as we speak your word, as we teach your word, as we preach your word this morning, draw them closer to you. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody who believes in a believing amen. Come on, somebody. appreciate Jesus this morning. Glory, glory, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. So good to see everyone in the service today. And if you haven't, uh, welcome your neighbor. If you're right in the room, please go ahead and say, welcome to church to somebody. Say, welcome to church. Welcome to church. I want to appreciate everyone joining us online, online church. Can we, can we put our hands together and appreciate everyone joining us online? I believe that the God whom you're seeking will meet you at every point of need. Whatever you are hearing the sound of my voice, I want to encourage you to take distractions away from you. Get said to be blessed by the word of God. Let your heart be open to receive. The Bible says they look unto him and they were, they, they, they were lightened. And uh, uh, it, it, uh, shame was taken away from them. I pray that this new week, 
uh, no, not, nothing shameful will be found around you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God will order your steps in his word. You will not miss your part in destiny. In the precious name of Jesus. All right, let's get into the word of God uh, uh, quickly. Uh, today, like I've said, I mean, like I shared in the last two weeks, that we are, are be at the end of the teaching of God's word today, we'll, we'll discuss uh, just for a few minutes on the projects for, for this year. I will intimate the church with that so that we can press in and be a blessing to the kingdom of God. I'm sharing this uh, in this service what we've titled Understanding and Leveraging the Gift of Men. Understanding and Leveraging the Gift of Men. If you haven't been around, we've been on a teaching series that we've tagged the theme for the year, which is Emerge. We believe that according to the word of God to us, this is a season and a time where God is causing his people to emerge out of obscurity and anything that holds us back and from the fullness of God's will for this season and this time. And we've ch shared, you know, several messages. Uh, um, last Sunday was Emerge with Force. And we emphasize the need uh, for each and every one of us to press into what God is doing this season with some measure of force. Uh, the Bible says from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing. And the forceful has been pressing into it. In the last service, I was emphasizing the fact that uh, one of the things about God that each believer must have at the back of our mind from time to time, if we want to enjoy the fullness of God, is to understand that God doesn't do casual stuff. Yeah, he places demands. God is a God of covenant, we call him. We call him covenant-keeping God. Anywhere you hear the word covenant, then it must dawn on you that this is beyond just a casual relationship. Yeah. At the base level, we say a, a covenant speaks to a contract. And anything that has to do, that, that has a contract at the base of it is not casual. It's no longer casual. Yeah. God, uh, you know, likes to connect with us, but he, he, he will be upfront at saying that this connection is a covenant. It's not a casual one. It's not a casual one. Human beings love to be casual with things. We dread commitment. Yeah, we dread commitment. The reason why some people listen to me right now, uh, especially men of age who are yet to be married, amongst other things, one of them may be fear of commitment. <laughs> and so in our relationship with God too, some people may be uh, listening to me right now, who, what is taking you away or what is limiting how far you are willing to go with God is also that fear of commitment. Because commitment demands that you surrender. Uh, and when you surrender, you may not know the outcome. And that's the fear. I don't know where this relationship is going, but I'm already submitting my life into your hand. And that's what God demands. And that's the, the, where the factor of trust weighs in heavily. Because for me to submit everything to him and surrender, I have to allow trust to play out. And God delights in his people trusting him. I've said all this just to speak to somebody in his house this morning, we're still struggling with your level of commitment to God. That it's time that you, you, you commit completely and fully because God doesn't do casual stuff. He does covenant, 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 covenant. Covenant speaks of commitment, commitment, commitment. Commitment. Yeah. Many of us here love to eat, uh, you know, English breakfast. And when you put, you know, one of the critical things in English breakfast is bacon and egg whether it's omelette or whatever, bacon and egg. And we say in the story of bacon and egg, the N is, was involved, the pig was committed. For you to have bacon, you have to kill the pig and slice the flesh. Am I saying the truth? But for you to have the egg, the N just releases the egg, still has its life, and walk away. That is involvement. It's different from commitment. And many people want to be involved without being committed. That's what is ruining many marriages. We have many marriages filled with involved people that are involved, who are content with involvement, but always shy away from commitment. Yeah. And then we bring that into our relationship with God as well. We are content with involvement, but we lack a sense of commitment. God says, draw near unto me, and I will draw near unto you. 
I'm as close to you as you want to. Yeah. Because when you draw near, you attract me. I'm as close to you as you want to. I'm as close to you as you want to. That's the word of God for somebody here this morning. In 2022, God will only be as close to you as you want to. Yeah. Coming into this service this morning, for somebody, it's like you're breaking the highs. I want to encourage you to press in a little bit more. Because God wants you to emerge. It's going to be as close to you as you want to. Now, in our commitment to God and in our work with God, what we're emphasizing this morning is that if you really want to emerge into the fullness of God, you need to understand that God uses people. He uses people. He uses people. He uses people. Many people are like, they, they, you know, the story of, 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 of the young man, you know, paddling, you know, the canoe in, in the middle of, 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 you know, of a lake, big lake. And then something happens and, you know, everything, I mean, the canoe size and the, the, the man was inside the water and then struggling for his life. And then uh, God sent somebody uh, who was just paddling past and said, I can put you in this one. Uh, the man said, no, I'm praying. I'm expecting God to rescue me. Yeah. And then another person was flying the helicopter, saw the guy there and said, can I throw you a rope, you know? The guy threw a rope. The guy refused to, to, to latch onto the rope and said, I'm still praying because I believe that God will come for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know where I'm going because eventually <laughs> the guy died and went to heaven. He said, God, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. He didn't show up. God said, I sent three people. Yeah, I sent three people. Yeah. Somebody came past. Another person, another person was telling you, I'm throwing the rope. Do you think I will come down myself? I use people. I send people. Yeah, I send people. And this morning, I need somebody to understand in the journey of emergence, into the fullness of what God has for you, uh, you need to understand and leverage the gift of man. Let's read from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Uh, maybe after this message, the way you see, the people who sit beside you in church, the people who live around you, the people that you work with, will be exactly different. And that will aid your emergence this year. Uh, the way you see the networks that God has planted you into will be different. And you'll be able to engage a little better. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 8, the Bible says, Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. One translation said, he led captivity captive and he gave men as gift. He gave men as gift. He gave men as gift. And uh, if you jump to verse 11, it then describe the functionality of the kind of man uh, within the context of a church. How God sends people and how uh, people, you know, uh, in the context of a church, how people function, the roles that they play in our lives. And it says, uh, and, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. He described five, for instance, different functionalities that people or roles that people play and it, 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 it then said in verse 12, it said, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Every saint of God is supposed to be equipped for the work of ministry. And by ministry, it means destiny fulfillment, simply. Fulfilling your own ministry. And you will need these functionalities to be able to fulfill your ministry. That's what the scripture is saying there. And the writer of, uh, of the book of Ephesians described the functionalities in apostles. These are people with can-do spirit, pioneering spirit, people who, 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 who bootstrap for God. Yeah. People who know how to break new ground. He said, uh, apart from apostles, he also talks about prophets, people who can see, who have been where you are going, and they can see and describe what is ahead to you. So, let's not over-spiritualize it. We're talking about functionality, even outside of the church. You know, this describes functionality in the context of the church. And we don't live in church, all right? Yeah, we do life every day. And God still has a plan for each and every one of us to encounter these functionalities outside of the church, but in a different way. But some people feel that the only people who can speak into your life are the people who know how to say, thus said the Lord. <laughs> but, but God puts us in situations where you're having a conversation with a mentor. And then you say, look, uh, what's next with your business? I'm going to do it. No, don't do it like that. I remember in 1985, I was about to do this and that. I know times have changed, but 
the, 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 the principles remain the same. So don't break that principle. Do it like this, do it like that, and that's a lifesaver for you. Yeah. Somebody say with me this, today. Are you still here? Yeah, that's a lifesaver for you. God delights in organizing such things for you and I. He delights in working that out. And in your story of emergence, please don't think that God will always just show up anyhow. He wants to use people. He wants to use people. I know some people pray for God to send them angels. In a case of, you know, you need safety and protection, God will send you angels. Yeah. But in the case, in this modern time, that you need emotional succor, you need to make a business decision, no. It, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, how many people have you met with angels? If angels are appearing to you all the time, people will run away from you. You will not be normal again, I'm telling you. Yeah, even you, you won't be normal again. Yeah. But, but you should pray for angels. Because you, you may be in a critical state. I mean, I've, I've, heard, I've read stories. I, I, have, I believe I've encountered angels before. I've been stranded before, and God sent me someone. I believe, he's a human being, but I believe he was an angel. I never met the person before. The person took me out of that situation, paid all the that's supposed to be paid, and I was free. Yeah, this was maybe about almost 30 years ago. I believe the person was an angel, because the person only said, I know your father. That's all. Somebody showed up in a strange city, where my family never lived before, and said, I know your father, what's the situation, and resolved it, and that's it. Yeah. I was a small boy, <laughs> but I, I, I knew that was an angel. But what I'm saying is that uh, we cannot be extremely spiritual or religious, if I can put it that way, to the point that uh, when God wants to use people for us, we're expecting that God himself will have to show up. And people carry grace. Different kind of graces. That's what Paul was describing in Ephesians chapter, uh, uh, chapter 4 there. That, that different kinds of graces on people. God wants to use them for you and I, and we need to position with the right mindset because some of those people are the ones that will help us to emerge into the fullness of what God has in mind for us. In Genesis chapter 30, when you read verse 27, Laban, 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 the uncle of Jacob, recognized grace on the life of Jacob. Because Jacob was carrying the blessing that Isaac put upon him. Yeah. So even Laban, a cheat, a terrible guy. Yeah. If you have never been Laban before, you won't understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. People who change contracts. Yeah. Laban was the kind of person I would say, I'll give you my daughter. And then exchange the daughter. Yeah. And put another one there. Jacob had suffered in his hands. But at some point, when Jacob said, look, I want to go, Laban had to hone up to say, don't go. Yeah, I know I've not been kind to you. I've cheated you, but you carry grace. Yeah, Laban said to him, he said, please stay. Please stay. I found favor. If I found favor on your side, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Because you are here, there are people that God will bring into our lives from time to time, and just because they're there, we will enjoy and be able to leverage certain kind of grace for the fulfillment of our own destiny. May God bring such people your way this year. Amen. May God bring such people your way this season. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. Relationships are God-ordained catalysts for emergence. Yeah. That's what I've been trying to say. That relationships are God-ordained catalysts for emergence. And some relationships carry prophetic grace and are doors into destiny. When God wants to help a man and a woman, what he does is to open our eyes to be able to recognize and see such relationships so that we can leverage them and we can invest in them more vitally. Yeah. Some relationships are divinely positioned to provoke dreams and visions and godly desires in your heart. You know that some people are around you, they provoke ungodly desires. Some of people around you, they provoke godly desires and godly vision out of your heart. You leave their presence. It was, it, 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 it's like uh, Mary visiting Elizabeth. Something leaped in your womb. You know, Mary, the mother of Jesus, when he visited uh, uh, the cousin Elizabeth, an older person who was already pregnant, and she was the only one that knew she was pregnant. But when she got in there, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped. Deep was calling unto deep. When you sit in front of people who are 
connecting with God the way you are connecting. That your journey in destiny connects somehow. There's a way some things connect. You know, when that happened in Luke chapter 1 and, and, and verse 39 down to 42 there, one, one thing that happened there was that there was an eruption of the move of the Spirit. Yeah. Elizabeth was not known to be a prophet, but she started to prophesy, accurate prophecy, and spoke concerning the baby in the womb of Mary. Mary that she had not seen for months. And those were not the dates of GSM or social media. Mary had not posted, I'm feeling somehow. Yeah. You know, if it was today, Mary, the Marys of today, they live on Instagram. Yeah. Have him for meeting. Who cares? <laughs> but that's what Marys of today do. <laughs> because if it was today, you would think that maybe Elizabeth was following her on Instagram and she had seen. Yeah. <laughs> but Mary showed up, showed up in the house of Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, the Bible says, then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Who told you? Yeah. Blessed is she who believes, for there shall be a fulfillment. There shall be a fulfillment. Yeah. There shall be a fulfillment. That, 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 that's how Elizabeth. And you can imagine what that did to Mary. Mary that has been traumatized. Mary that has been thinking. I mean, do you think it's easy for a lady to just wake up in the morning and just realize that she's pregnant without being with a, a man and the taboo that it, 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 it has ever been and much more those days? And somebody may be listening to me right now. You're in a dire strait. You're in a bad situation. You don't know how to handle it. God wants to send you people. Yeah. God wants to send you people. God wants to send you people who know what you are going through, who have been there before, or who are submissive enough to God for the hand of God to come upon them to speak into that situation. Somebody may be listening to me right now. What you are going through, you don't understand it. You cannot explain it. Can I say something to somebody here this, this day? Uh, not everything can be explained. Yeah, not everything can be explained. Some people backslide because they cannot explain what they are going through and they feel that God is no longer in their life. Where do you put the story of Job in that context? God and Satan were having a conversation in Job chapter 1. Job was not there. How can you negotiate your destiny behind you? Yeah. God was telling Job, I mean, Satan, have you seen my servant Job? There was none like him in all of the East and all that. Blah, 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 blah. And the devil said, okay, if that's the truth, let, let's just try him. And God said, okay, you can go ahead, but don't kill him. Job apparently was an, a specimen in this heavenly experiment. You know, there's only one thing. When God releases you as a specimen in an experiment, you're going to come out better. It may be life-threatening, but you're going to come out better. That's why today, one of the greatest lessons in the Bible, as far as God's sovereignty is concerned, is the book of Job. Sometimes God just wants to take somebody and just make you a specimen in his own experiment. When heaven leverages you like that, it's because God wants to multiply you over. But it's, it can be life-threatening. Yeah. Because somebody may be listening to me right now. I mean, some, some, sometimes I get maybe an email or something. A lady is saying, look, uh, PG, I've lived my life all well. I got saved early. I've never committed this. I've never done that. But how did I end up with this coconut head of a man? Yeah. You're just a specimen in the hand of Jehovah. Yeah. If you will pull through that situation your story may save thousands of lives in the future. Yeah. I, I, I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. Before you throw in the towel, I feel like God has mismanaged your destiny. Yeah, never mismanaged anybody's destiny. Yeah. You need to understand that you just need to trust him. And he will bring people into your life who will speak specifics into your situation. Say amen, somebody. So quickly, there are four crucial roles that people must play in our lives as we emerge. Four crucial roles that people must play in our lives. Four important relationships that you need to trust God for this year depending on the season of your life. Every, all of these four may not apply to you but one or two of them may apply to you and you need to be able to pray through them. Trust God for them this year. That you will be able to encounter these kind of relationships. One is midwives and nurses. Yeah. Mid midwives and nurses. God will at different times 
bring to our lives people that will midwife our emergence or our destinies. Some people are just grace to be able to midwife your next dream, your next project. And depending on the season, if you're in a season right now where there are many things being incubated in your womb, you need midwives, you need nurses. So God will bring us to people who will be amplifiers, interpreters, publishers of his call over our lives. That's what it, 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 it delights in doing. God delights in doing that. He delights in doing that. And you need to, to, to trust him this season and pray for that to be the reality of your life. You don't want to be stranded in your journey of destiny. And it's not going to be by being a loner and not being able to take advantage of the relationships that God will bring you into. Psalm 68 and verse number 6, the Bible says it's God that put the solitaries in families. So God knows where you are. He put the solitaries in families. God set the solitaries in families. And he brings those who are bound into prosperity. He said, but the rebellious dwell in dry land. It's not his will for anybody to dwell in dry land. It's when people feel either they are okay by themselves or they don't need anybody. Maybe you have suffered one hurt or the other. Before now, you are so lacking trust in relationships. Then some things will be limited from you. In this year of emergence, I pray that nothing will limit your emergence. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All who believe shall believe in amen. amen. So it's important. Acts chapter 9, when you read from verse 11, Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, had an encounter with God. God struck him, he lost his eyesight and all that, and they put him somewhere. And God was speaking to Ananias. Yeah. Uh, 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 and, and look at what God told him. He said, so the Lord said to him, arise, go to the street called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he's praying, he's praying, he's praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. So there's a Paul who's going through an encounter. There's an Ananias that God is speaking to who's going to midwife the process to go lay hands on Paul. His sight will be restored and then you'll be able to tell him this is what God is demanding of you. God makes this kind of arrangements a lot of the time. And we need to be able to step into it if we want to bat destinies. Glory be to Jesus. Everything that you carry this season, there will be no abortion. Amen. There will be no steal back. Amen. You will carry your dreams to full time. Amen. Your dreams will bless humanity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your nurses and midwives will not be eating from you. Amen. They will show you favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Secondly, we have defenders and intercessors. Defenders and intercessors. Defenders and intercessors. At seasons of life, sometimes you are going through a storm. You need people who will shield you and cover you in prayers. You need people who will stand for you and speak for you when other people are speaking against you. God is the one that orchestrates it and sends people into your life. And somebody may be in that kind of season right now and you feel abandoned. You feel no, no, there's no voice that's rising for you. The Bible says every voice that's rising against you, you will condemn. And you are condemning them in the spirit, but you need human beings who will also speak up for you. Yeah, who will speak up for you. You know, some people in politics will talk about Godfathers and all that. This is not essentially Godfatherism, but God raises people. Yeah, even in politics, even in business. Yeah, somebody will just say, look, I can stand for this person. Just, just approve that thing. Yeah, oh, this person will do well in this situation. Yeah, and that's it. May God raise defenders for you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I got a call one day, a couple of years ago. Uh, there was something that was happening, in, uh, and it happened to be around the government quarters uh, uh, in, in some place where they were just talking about our church. And somebody put a call through to me, who happens to be a person of means and, you know, highly placed person, and who said, Pastor, uh, what happened? I heard something, 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 and I was at this meeting, and they were talking about your church. Yeah. Uh, apparently, some, some, some person felt like 
I think one of our locations that maybe there was something that was not okay or something like that, and they were going to take it and, and, uh, and turn it to what it's not. And this person said, but I made them realize that I know you and I know what you stand for. And I know that uh, what they're saying is not true. So I need you to write a letter, you know, take uh, 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 the, the, a documentation or something and send it in and let them know and let them have the true situation of things. And I said, thank you. God bless you. We're going to do that first thing next week. And that was it. Just one person who can speak out for you when you are not there. Yeah. And God positions such people just to be there as defenders. At the same time, sometimes they're just intercessors, people who pray for you. I'm blessed to have you know, people in this church who pray for me. For instance, Paul was writing one of the epistles who said, pray for us that the word of God will flow freely, that it will be unhindered. People who pray, who pray over my family and all that. And people here, just general church members who also talk to me about the fact that pastor were praying for you. Oh, we're praying our devotion this morning and my son prayed this prayer for you. Oh, that gladdens my heart. Especially when kids pray, pray for you. I think God hears their prayers more. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. But you will be in certain situations in your life just like Peter was. In Luke 22, we, when even Jesus in verse 31 had to speak to him. Bowsers and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Luke 22 and 31, Luke 22 and verse 31, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you. Yeah. He said, but I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you that your faith will, should not fail. Yeah. That your faith should not fail. That sometimes that your faith is about to fail. God raises people to pray for you. He raises people to pray for you. As pastors in this church, we spend time to pray over the congregation. We pray. We pray for people going through different things. Yeah. Pray for people. My wife and I, in the last two weeks or so, we've been praying for parents in this congregation, for instance, praying over children because we, we believe that God is moving over our children this year and doing certain things. So, so people pray for you. You need to recognize, I mean, so, and you don't have to wait you can set it up on your own. Intercessors, friends, some people here, you are here and you are who you are today because your mother prayed for you. That's why you should honor her especially. Are you still with me today? The big question is, who are you praying for? Yeah. Because some, some of us, the way we... Uh, uh, let me even talk to parents right now. You can complain from now till tomorrow that the grade of that young boy is not going up. When was the last time you laid hands on him and blessed him and prayed for him? Stop complaining. Pray. Add the prayer to the complaint. Or do something better. That's all I'm saying. But pray. 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 Don't be the kind of parent that only complain, but don't pray. Because some of us are who we are today because our parents prayed for us. Glory be to Jesus. I said glory be to Jesus. So it's important that we trust God to raise defenders for us and to, 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 to raise intercessors for us. In, in Colossians chapter 4, when you read verse 12, Paul was writing there and he spoke about a particular guy, Epaphras. Epaphras. Epaphras happened to be uh, the, the, the poster child uh, of intercessors in the New Testament. Yeah. Epaphras, in Colossians 4 and verse 12, said, Epaphras, who is one of you, a born servant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Can you imagine if we have many more epaphrases in a church like this? Many more people will fulfill their destiny. Because for Paul to bring this guy up and say, Epaphras, this is, yeah, this is a poster child for intercess intercessors in their generation. How many people are you praying for? What you make happen for someone? God will make happen for you. Are you still with me today? And somebody may be saying, this season, oh, I need defenders. I need, I need intercessors. But you also intercede for somebody. And that's how God will raise other people for you. Number three, we have mentors, coaches, and gatekeepers. Yeah. Mentors, coaches, and gatekeepers. Let me quickly make a distinction. Uh, mentors. 
A mentor is someone who has, I mean, who has more experience than you. And it's a few steps ahead of you. They offer guidance, stories, advice, based on their life, you know, their, their, their life, uh, 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 on, uh, uh, on their life experience, and, you know, with that, they, they, they help their mentees navigate different seasons of life. This season, as we go into 2022, this year of emerge, somebody here, you need a mentor to be able to emerge properly. So that you don't emerge anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. You need a mentor. You need to trust God for one. You need to trust God for one. A coach. A coach unlocks your potential in a specific area to maximize your performance and achieve success. There's no top performer in the world. Anyone, in any area, in tennis, in any area of sports. Yeah. The best players have the best coaches. Yeah. Have you seen anybody before that won a tournament without a coach? No. They always have coaches. Yeah. They always have coaches. They always have coaches. And many people want to win tournaments in life. Without a coach. <laughs> That's why many people are not qualifying for the tournament in the first instance. Yeah. Because a coach will speak to specifics, a specific area of life. Some people are almost messing up your marital destiny right now. You need a married coach. Yeah. Yeah. You need a career coach. You need somebody to coach you through your spiritual experience. Because life is not about your preference. Life is about principles. Preferences and principles are different. Many people are struggling in life right now because you are living it based on preference. And there are area, departments of life where your preference is irrelevant. It's irre completely irrelevant. <laughs> Except you go by certain principles, you can't make a headway. Am I saying the truth today? Yeah. That's hard to say, but somebody needs to get it. So you can humble yourself and submit to principles. <laughs> Some people are very, yeah, this is what I prefer. It's not about your preference. Many vital departments of life don't respect your preference. They answer to principles. Yeah. And the word of God is loaded with principles. Divine principles. And some people have walked through those principles. They've seen them walk. God will send them to you to help do cost correction for your own destiny. If you want to emerge, you must submit. Yeah, you must submit. You must submit. You must submit. And put your pride aside and submit to those coaching relationships. Submit to those mentoring relationships and let your destiny emerge. Gatekeepers control access to vital connections or necessary information that will position you for emergence. You can imagine the Pharaoh's cup bearer and the vital role he played at getting Joseph out of prison. Without that Joseph cup bearer, who will mention Joseph in Pharaoh's court? Yeah, nobody. Nobody will mention Joseph in Pharaoh's court. It's very important that we have that at, at the back of our mind, and God wants to send such people into somebody's life this season, and you will not miss them in the name of Jesus. I said, you will not miss them in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Last one is teachers and interpreters. Teachers and interpreters. Teachers and interpreters. The people that God is sending.
People are praying for things that are already delivered. But you're praying wrongly. Yeah. You jump from one prayer meeting to another, and this, da, 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 you know, all kinds of things. Meanwhile, God has already positioned the solution. But you think it's going to be harder than that. Yeah. I think it's going to be harder than that. You think, I mean, when I pray all night, every day, for the next one week, God will just answer. God is saying that <laughs> the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. It's not about, you know, sometimes we need to pray, but it's not, you know, some people pray only to show off. I've been praying now for the last six hours. You know? Their faith is in their prayers, not in God who answers prayers. Yeah, their faith is in how long their prayer has been, not in the God that answers the prayers. Yeah. But God, that when you give him attention, in one hour of prayer, I can say it's enough. It's enough. You have prayed enough. I've done this and that, just walk into it. Some people say, no, I will punish myself. So, that <laughs> so you put your faith in your activity, not in God. Yeah. So some people say, you know, we have been passing out dry, dry since last week. Their mouth dry, face dry, everything dry. Yeah. Passing out dry since last week. And, uh, they, you know, we can't fast like this and God will not answer. Who told you? <laughs> when the Bible says you pray and you pray at least because you consume it upon your own loss. You're trying to tie the hand of God for your preference. When God says there's a principle that you're running away from. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. So God will send you teachers, interpreters. So that those who will teach you from God's word and help you dimension is move around your life. As I wrap up today, remember the story of Samuel and Eli. Samuel was hearing God. In 1 Samuel chapter, uh, chapter 3, he will run to Eli. Three times after the third time, Eli told him in verse 8, go and lie down. When you hear that call again, this is what you will say. Eli had to teach him. Yeah. Lie down there and say, speak for your servant is hearing. And that singular response started the prophetic ministry of Samuel. Because that was a teacher, Eli, that was just there to tell him exactly what to do. Your teachers will no longer be hidden from you any longer. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus. As I wrap this up today, I will pray. Put the last slide on the three stuff. Yeah. The three things I want to, 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 to bring to your notice as I wrap this up. Three keys to keeping and resourcing these vital relationships. One is that you need to invest in loyalty and service. Service godly friendships or relationships that God will bring into your life. Some people have messed up relationships for lack of loyalty. Yeah. Or you're just misbehaving in that relationship. You cannot be trusted there. Yeah. Another thing is you need to work in honor. 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 Honor people that God is bringing into your life. Don't treat them anyhow. Young people, listen to me. I know you, 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 you read widely, you know a lot of things, and you believe that people who are older, they, they, they are archaic, they don't know what's going on in town. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in my, in my language, in Yoruba language, they said, a child can have new clothes more than an adult, but cannot have old clothes. Yeah. Like an adult. Because you haven't lived that long. And those old clothes speak to where they are being. Yeah. They speak to where they have been and experiences they have been or, or the things that they have experienced. So it's important that you, you understand that. Yeah. It's important that you understand that. Uh, uh, you, you need to honor people. And sometimes honor means give them something. Sometimes honor means defer to them. Because in the Bible, honor means both. When the Bible says honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of, all of your increase, it's practical honor. You can't be showing up empty handed all the time. Somebody whose time is worth this much. Every time you show up. In fact, sometimes you even come late. Yeah, that was, that's lack of honor. Honor, honor in relationship. And reciprocate honor when you have been honored. Are you still with me today? Very important. And lastly, exercise discernment. 
Because God is the one that leads. Yeah, the fact that somebody has helped your friend does not mean that's your helper. Mm -hmm. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Because it puts people under pressure. Eh, but you, you, uh, can you help me talk to your uncle? Talk to your uncle. Which uncle? Let God reveal your own uncle to you. Yeah. It's the God that puts the solitaries in family. Yeah. Put people under pressure. Yeah. Pu push, 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 push. There are people who work, who work with you. You know, sometimes they will be pushing you. You are the CEO, but, you know, you see all this dancing around and eye service. We've said you should honor people, but use discernment. It's not everybody God will use for you. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not everybody God will use for you, but when you notice the one that God will use for you, please honor them. Don't be like Lot. You know the story of Abraham and Lot? Lot didn't have sense. I'm just saying it plainly. Abraham took him out of the village, took him to the city. He was enjoying the grace upon Abraham. He now became a big boy. And Abraham now said, oh, our staff, they are fighting each other. So maybe you should move to another side. And Lot looked at Abraham and chose first. He chose first when your uncle is standing. As God will have it, Lot chose where God has left. Dead end, that's what we call those places. If you don't want to enter into dead end of destiny, honor people that God is bringing into your life. Yeah. Abraham said, choose whatever Lot said. Yes, I will choose first. He chose Sodom and Gomorrah. You will not choose Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. my God will order your steps into well-watered gardens, into places that God is going himself. In the name of Jesus. Lift your two hands to Jesus today. Stand on your feet, everyone, under the influence of my voice. Everyone online, lift your two hands to Jesus and just, just pray right now. I don't know which relationship you need for this season. I don't know which one. I don't know what, what, what appeals to you in the fall that when somebody here, you're trusting God for defenders, for intercessors, pray right now. Somebody here, you, you, the, you, 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 your heart is loaded with new dreams and new visions that need to be battered. Will you pray for midwives, for nurses, that God will bring into your life this season? Somebody is trusting God for gatekeepers, people who open gates of industries, gates of cities to you, for you to emerge into the fullness of your destiny. Will you lift your voice right now? Lift your voice right now. Say, Father, uh, my heart is open. My heart is open in the name of Jesus. Give me grace to leverage the gift of man. In the name of Jesus, give me grace to leverage the gift of man this season. Give me grace to leverage the gift of man this season. In every aspect of life and within the functionalities that I need them. Will you open your mouth right now and pray? God is still in the business of using people for other people. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody let God hear your voice right now. Let him hear your voice right now. Will you, will you verbalize your desire? I don't know what kind of relationship you need this season, but our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. He's the one that put the solitaries in families. He's the one that says your teachers will no longer be eating from you any longer. Lift your voice and speak to him today. Speak to him today. Speak to him today. Thank you, everlasting Father. In the precious name of Jesus. I love to pray. I, I, I love somebody to pray this one last prayer. Pray for the release of grace, for forgiveness and healing over any vital destiny relationship that has gone by in your life. Any relationship that's vital to destiny that has gone bad in your life. Let me give you an example before you pray. Before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he went to talk to Abraham. Imagine that Abraham was still hurting and could not intercede for Lot because Abraham had to intercede for Lot. God, if there are 60 people in that place who are righteous, will you see the, the destroy it until they got to 10? And then God said, you know what? Because you interceded, all I'm going to do is let's take your nephew out and his family, but I'll still destroy the place. 
Imagine that there was nobody like Abraham that God could go to. Lot would have been destroyed with Sodom and Gomorrah. But because there was healing there, there was forgiveness there, Abraham was able to stand in the gap. Will you pray today? Lord, every vital relationship to my destiny, where there's hurt, animosity, and unforgiveness, I pray a release of the spirit of forgiveness over those relationships in the name of Jesus. If you are the one that needs to forgive somebody, will you receive grace right now to forgive? If there's somebody that's holding you, will you pray over them right now? That Lord, I release the spirit of forgiveness over this relationship. Over this relationship. Will you release the spirit of forgiveness over your family relationships? Over your business partnership relationships? Will you release the spirit of forgiveness in the name of Jesus? Because it's not over until it's over. Lord never knew that God would still need Abraham. So you need to pray for the spirit of forgiveness. Anyone that's holding you this season, that's vital to your destiny, will you pray the spirit of forgiveness over them? Will you also receive grace to forgive? Will you receive grace to forgive today? Father, we thank you. And we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. In the precious name we are praying. Wave your hands to Jesus, everyone, and just bless him. Lord, we thank you for the preaching and teaching of your word today. We release over this congregation grace to recognize divine relationships in the name of Jesus. Bring us into new networks. Let your favor rest upon us. Let it attract every functional relationship that we need to emerge into destiny. In the name of Jesus, anyone that has been stranded, let alone you, God, According to Psalm 68 and verse 6, you are the one that brings the solitaries into families. We command that this season, Lord, you move over our lives and bring anyone that may have been stranded into uh, uh, functional relationships that will open us up for destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you, everlasting Father, and we bless your name. In the name of Jesus. Please, you may have your seat. Have your seat.